In what's considered unprecedented territory for the nation, Alaska's U.S. senators say there were 11 military vessels from China and Russia operating near the Aleutian Islands in the last couple of days. Four U.S. Navy warships are dispatched to the Aleutian Islands following the incursion. We spoke with Senator Dan Sullivan minutes after hearing about this. This is unprecedented, not just for Alaska, but for America to have uh, 11 warships jointly being operated by the Chinese and Russians who are increasingly working together, essentially doing freedom and navig or, uh, navigation operations, incursions into um, uh, Alaska's area. Senator Murkowski said in a press release, quote, we have been in close contact with leadership from Alaska Command for several days now and received detailed classified briefings about the foreign vessels that are transiting U.S. waters in the Aleutians. She continued saying, quote, this is a stark reminder of Alaska's proximity to both China and Russia, as well as the essential role our state plays in our national defense and territorial sovereignty. Incursions like this are why we are working so hard to secure funding and resources to expand our military's capacity and capabilities in Alaska and why our colleagues must join us in supporting those investments, unquote. The exact time and location of the incursion was not made public as information about the event is being declassified. Although Senator Sullivan says Alaskans are not in danger, the presence of foreign military vessels nearby may be unsettling to residents. For Sullivan, it's a reminder that there is still work to do for Alaska. All right, Shalom. Let me start by giving all the praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Arachak, Wadash. Dear ones to the elder apostles and bishops of the great millstone at Ruel, peace, blessings, and salutations. And so, though, for you, like Tabernacle of David scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, just a quick word on. Uh, you know, the latest update, you know, dealing with this uh, situation. You know, what it appears to me is, uh, you know, the, the Chinese and Russian uh, government, you know, they uh, pulled a, a U.S. tactic against uh, the U.S. Because normally, you know, the U.S. will, you know, they'll provoke by sending... You know, some type of, uh, you know, craft carriers or naval vessels along the um, the borders, you know, of, you know, China, Russia. You always hear about them, you know, provoking the Chinese by moving, you know, inching towards Taiwan, you know, moving towards uh, China and the South China Sea. You know, and they'll claim, you know, freedom of navigation, you know. But they do it, you know, to try to undermine, you know, their uh, their power and see how much they can uh, get away with, you know, trying to play bully, trying to be slick. You know, they've been doing that for years, you know, toying, toying around along, you know, the, uh, you know, the boundaries of those uh, countries. You know, they would normally feel threatened and, you know, send, you know, give a warning you know, to uh, the West. So now they're using the U.S. tactics against them, you know. So that, that, was, that was an interesting move made by them. And, uh, you know, we're going to see, you know, how it all progresses. You know, um, we know that, you know, things are brewing with both countries against uh, the West. Um, we know that China's been preparing, you know, militarily, you know, for a, uh, an invasion on Taiwan. And they know that, you know, if they do that, you know, Russia's definitely, I mean, uh, the U.S. is going to be definitely uh, drawn in, you know, to go to war with them. You know, because America sees Taiwan as a, you know, sovereign and a separate from China and China feels otherwise. You know, that that's, you no know, that's our land too. You know, so as they prepare for that on that side, you know, you, you still got the Russian-Ukrainian conflict. And the latest I heard from that is, um, you know, ever since uh, they've been attacking, um, you know, it's, it's been a lot of uh, attacks going on uh, inside Moscow. 
that they've been uh, blaming on the Ukraine. Um, we we know that there was an, another attack on the, uh, I think it was a one of the bridges that that uh, Russia uses, you know, for transport. And um, now you're hearing about the Wagner Group. They're actually uh, pushing uh, cl closer towards uh, Poland, which we all know Poland is a uh, another NATO ally. You know, so, you know, these bold moves being made are showing you that, uh, you know, they, they're, you know, preparing themselves. All right. So this ain't nothing but the most high, you know, he's just, uh, you know, mustering the host of the battle. All right. Let me get, um, Isaiah 13. It is, uh, Isaiah 13. And verse uh, four says, the noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. So the Lord is who's assembling these nations, you know, to prepare for battle against uh, the West, against Babylon, you know, the beast and so on and so forth. And, uh, Russia and China are now superpowers that rival, uh, you know, NATO and, and, and America. So they're aligning themselves and they're getting themselves ready uh, militarily and economically, you know, which is why they got um, the vast majority of countries in the world, you know, that, that are now, uh, you know, aligning themselves and, and making trade deals, you know, with these two uh, superpowers, Russia and China. You know, the, the, the Chinese yuan getting stronger. You have the uh, the Russian uh, 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 rubble, ruble. You know, they got gold and silver back in their currency. These other nations, you know, they're getting with the BRICS, you know, showing that they no longer, you know, believe in American uh, dominance anymore. You know, they don't want anything to do with America's uh, democracy, the, the, the Babylonian wine. You know, you got the African countries rising up against America and siding with uh, Russia. And we know Russia plays that role of being a guard into, you know, these uh, Eastern nations. So ultimately, the Lord is uh, putting them together. Let's go to Jeremiah. Um, was it 51? Yeah, Jeremiah 51 and 11, it says, make bright the arrows. And we know it's talking about the missiles. Gather the shields. The Lord have raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes for his device is against Babylon to destroy it. Because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. And that's talking about the Russians. So the Lord is putting the spirit on them to, to you know, prepare themselves right now. You know, they, ain't, you know, really push the whole line because. Ultimately, the Lord, you know, has to get everything, you know, prepared and, and, and put into place. Still waiting on the, uh, the the prophecy of the MOTB to be uh, pushed forward, you know, and, and, and various other things. But we know that, you know, the uh, the third woe is coming quickly and that's going to be the final uh, judgment. You know, when the Lord has them all um, gathered in, in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. You know, basically so the Lord can plead with them. You know. So before that happens, they have to be, you know, uh, assembled. Let's go from there to uh, Jeremiah 50. <laughs> Jeremiah 50 and... Uh, Verse nine, it says, for lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon, an assembly of great nations from the north country. So Russia is not going to be alone, you know, just like America is not alone because, you know, the horror that sits upon the uh, the beast having uh, seven heads and ten horns. Well, uh, Russia also has, you know, assembly of nations, too, that are in league. And they're just as prepared, you know, militarily and economically. Okay. It says, 
and they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence she shall be taken, talking about Babylon. Their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man, and none shall return in vain. You know, when that final moment comes, you know, when they uh, decide to, you know, push those buttons, those uh, missiles are not going to be intercepted. You know, they're not going to return. You know, they're going to, they're going to, um, they're going to, you know, they're going to come straight to uh, their target. You know, like it tells you in second Ezra, uh, yeah, it was at the, the 15th or 16th chapter. <laughs> Talks about you know a strong archer, you know that that shooteth his uh his arrow until the ends of, of the earth and shall not miss. It shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the earth. So they're not going to return in vain, and that's the whole purpose of them even having missiles. They didn't they they not they didn't develop and put all these billions of dollars into uh, their, their uh, nuclear arsenal if it's not going to at one point be used. The Lord is just, you know, holding them in, in storage until that final day. Remember, um, the missiles are known as the armory of the Most High. Jeremiah 50 and 25, the Lord have opened his armory and have brought forth the weapons of his indignation, for this is the work of the Lord God of hosts, in the land of the Chaldeans. All right, and I always go, I like to go into this word armory. All right, which uh, the Hebrew word, Awatazar. And it says treasure, treasure storehouse. And it says here, magazine of weapons, figuratively of God's armory. All right. So those missiles that these nations hold are really the most sized missiles that he's holding in, in, in store, you know, for that, for the, the day of the Lord. All right. And, and they are going to come down upon Idumia in which all the prophets, they all saw that vision of, of you know, the Russian army, the, the, the Chinese, the Iranian, you know, the, the Korean, North Koreans. All right. India, like all those different countries that that hold the the bow, the, the arrow, they saw them being launched over here to America. And multiple of those countries, they didn't had uh, missile simulations, you know, with America being the the, the target, the targeted uh, country. Well, it's all prophetic, you know. The Lord, you know, warned of these things, and us being the prophets, you know. We're, we're uh, going into the prophecies and we're bringing it out, giving the forewarning. And that's why we're constantly warning our people that if they don't get right, you know, if they don't come out of uh, this, 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 this whore, come out of this Western mindset and, and you know, come back to the Lord, you know, his, his ways, his statutes, his judgments and, and, and repent that they're going to be a part of this judgment. You know, our people, they always uh, have an out with the Most High because the Lord, he's a, a merciful power. He's not willing that any should uh, perish, but that all should come to, you know, repentance. All right. But anyway, um, so you see what's going on. And this ain't nothing but another, you know, war and rumor of war. You know, because the Lord is, uh, he's a man of war, you know, and he's, you know, causing this stir up. To get these nations uh, ready, you know, so they're they're provoking each other on both sides. You know, America does this to uh, China and Russia, and now you know now they're um, coming together and they're doing it. You know, eventually some something's gonna happen, man. All right, they already been uh, you know sending spy drones, spy uh, balloons, and stuff like that, getting gaining all type of intel. You're not gonna be doing that unless you're really trying to be tactical. You know, in in uh, you know, strategizing for war. All right, spying out the military, their command centers, so on and so forth. So this is uh, Matthew twenty four and uh, six. It says, "And you shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. 
for nation shall rise against nation. That's what we're seeing. Okay. Um, you know, you got uh, China versus America. You got uh, Ukraine and Russia, uh, NATO and Russia, um, you know, and, and various other, you know, things going on. You know, in the Middle East, you know, Iran and uh, Israel. That's going to spark back up as well. So you got nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilences. You know, you, a lot of that is happening. And earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. All right. And um, it's also reiterated in the book of uh, Second Ezra, the uh, 16th chapter. It is uh, Second Ezra 16, and I'm going to start at 17. It says, woe is me, woe is me, who shall deliver me in those days? The beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginning of famine and great death. And there's going to be a lot of death, all right? There's going to be a lot of you know, casualties all over, man, especially when the food gets scarce. It ain't going to be safe because that's when people stop dealing logically when they're hungry, when they're starving. And you think it's bad now, people robbing each other in broad daylight, people killing each other in road rage situations. Well, just wait till famine hit. It's going to be a lot of death out there, man. This is the beginning of wars and we're in the beginning stages of the, the, the last world's uh, war. The third woe. All right. And, you know, having, uh, you know, Navy drills, joint drills, you know, uh, missile attack simulations. You know, so those are, that's the beginning stages. You know, putting your military, putting your uh, your, your money in, into uh, your, your, your military. Development of uh, new weapons and missile defense systems. That's all part of the beginning of our wars, man. You know, throwing sanctions on each other, having uh, trade wars, sanctions, you know, uh, proxy wars, trying to take over certain land masses that have uh, uh, pipelines and uh, routeway, uh, you know, different uh, trading routes. That's all part of, you know, beginning stages of war. Economic wars usually turn into Actual wars. It says, and the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? You know, and, and you know, the, the, the pestilences, the earthquakes, that's all part of the evils. The famine, that's part of the evil. All right. The, 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 the poverty increasing is, and it's causing a lot of, um, 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 you know, mental uh, stress, anguish upon the people, you know, people falling into depression. That's all part of the evils, man. The devastation of uh, these different cities. It, it, it's all going to uh, increase because, you know, we're in, a, in, the, in the, um, the beginning of sorrows. And like it also tells you down in. Um, was it the 39th? Chapter, I mean, it's like the 39th verse, it says, even so shall not the plagues be. Let me start at uh, 37. It says, behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack as a woman with child in the 10th. It's like in the ninth month, bring forth her son with two or three hours of her birth. Great pains can pass her womb and like a woman when she's going into labor. Seem like uh, those contractions start to become more and more. Um frequent you know uh between each other you know she'll have a contraction and then uh another 30 minutes you have another one but then after that now instead of them being 30 minutes apart now they're uh 20 minutes apart then down to 10 minutes then the you know then they just start going back to back and it's just like the pain is non-stop the, the the closer you she gets to um 
you know, uh, you know, pushing a child out. You know, so that's how the plagues are going to continue to um, increase in, in, in the world. You know, just nonstop, man. Food, food uh, crisis, uh, uh, inflation, which eventually is going to turn into hyperinflation. Then the crime rate is going to continue to skyrocket. Depression, drug overdose, more drug abuse. The love of many waxing cold, people just murdering each other left and right. It's going to be like the purge. All right, women, you know, been on this, uh, you know, I don't need no man. I don't need no security. I could do it by myself, independent spirit, you know, the feminist spirit. And you're going to start to see women finally turn into women because they're not going to be safe. All right, men getting drafted off into the war. So it's going to be a shortage of, uh, you know, men out there. So the women are going to get desperate. Yeah, we're going to see all this, man. It says, Which pains when the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. Even so shall not the plagues be sent. It's like you, even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth, and the world shall mourn, and sorrows shall come upon it on every side. All right, so... Yeah, you, you're not going to be able to, st to stop, you know, the plagues that are being uh, sent. Because it's going to be the Lord that's doing these things. All right. Yeah, the Lord, he does uh, make peace and he also creates evil. He, the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, do all these things, man. But, you know, at least we're going to know that these are all indications that the Lord is getting ready to, uh, to visit. You know, he's getting ready to return. So, you know, we just giving a warning. But um, yeah, man, hey, the third woe, uh, the second woe is passing, the third woe come quickly. All right. Uh Joel uh three and nine. You know, this is a major pivotal part of uh prophecy, man. The M O T B and uh the WW three, all right. Joel 3 and 9, it says, Proclaim you this among the Gentiles, prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears, let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all you heathen, and gather yourselves together round about, till they cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Yahweh. Let the heathen be awakened. And come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, Yahushapat, the most high judgment, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. And that's what the Lord is ultimately going to do. You know, using the angels to come down here and, you know, um, store up the minds of the, the, the kings and the rulers of uh, these eastern countries because they're being prepared to move into battle, which is going to be concentrated in the, uh, the Middle East. Right where the Lord wants them so that he can uh, have them all at one place and have them lined up for Yahweh and the angels to devour, you know, and simultaneously their missile are going to be uh, getting sent off right over here. Turn America into uh, the world's biggest ashtray, you know, and their overthrow is going to be like when the Lord overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It was going to be left without inhabitant forever and ever. That's the end game. So, you know, this is a, the article from uh, the New York Post. And, uh, you know, we'll try to, uh, you know, I'll leave, a, I'll, leave a, um, I'll leave this in the description. Okay. So anyway, with that, I'm going to give all praise to y'all. Lord willing, this was edifying. To the next lesson, Shalom.